ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Morning Tune Cast. Uh, it is Monday, and as I said last week, instead of doing a different show every single day, I'm going to be doing a different show every single week, so that way uh, we can still have a little bit of variety, but I can pick up the pace a little bit in terms of how many episodes I get out. So, where we last left, left the girls off, uh, we are talking about Supernatural Academy, and uh, where we last left off, the girls, they, they, their marks have been exposed, Kristoff Christoph is, is nowhere to be found, uh, the, the, the campus is on lockdown, and the girls are trying to get home, but Tara intervenes, I don't know why she was so, like, brutal about it, dragging them away in a net, that, that just, that seems very extreme, but I guess in, guess in this circumstance, extreme is the only way to get through to them, but, uh, she intervenes and is like, hey, you guys can't go back to the campus, because people are looking for you. Uh, the These enforcers are trying to find you. And so the girls decide to go back to Earth. And they hide out in somebody's apartment. I'm not really sure whose. I can't tell whether it's... Um, I think it's Misha's mom's ap- mom's apartment, but uh, they go and hide, and they do end up running into Misha's friend Hallie, which is really cute because I like the like the idea that um, Hallie's not mad at them for hiding the fact that they're supernatural. Because in most of these shows, there would be a lot of hijinks where they try and and disguise the fact that they're not human because they can't tell anybody. And there would be a lot of wacky stuff, but no, here it's just like, oh yeah, we're we're not human, and Hallie just accepts that. Um, with very little fanfare, I was surprised that the show didn't play up her being pissed off that they didn't tell her. But it's it's kind of cute her reaction. Uh, we also learn that uh, the apartment is covered. I mean, the walls are painted in silver to protect the girls, although. I don't get why that would protect them from other people because, you know, not everybody is a werewolf, so not everybody would be poisoned by silver. I also find it very weird because, like, the girls themselves, you'd think them being werewolves, it it makes them sick. So you'd think you'd want to find another way to not poison your children. (laughs) Like, I don't know if it would kill them at some point, but it clearly makes them physically ill. And they can't even touch the walls. So, um, I find it very, very weird, but, uh, it, I, I guess it's, I guess it's helpful for warding off all other problems. Um, and the other reason I think it's very weird is because Jay, uh, at one point goes outside and they sing, which basically, I guess create some kind of like protective barrier. So why why couldn't they just figure out a way to do that? Why they they could just create a protective barrier anyway. So why not just tear all the wallpaper down and then you wouldn't be sick anymore? But uh, that's that's just my confusion. My ADH brain you know ain't tried to pick at everything and find a way to it confuse everything. It also attracts a lot of other fake creatures. Um which which is So there are other fake creatures living in New York, right? But we've never seen them before. And Misha's never had a problem album with this. So I don't understand what they need protection for is if we auction for if we don't know We didn't know that there were other fake creatures in New York. And, like, she... Like, the mother was hiding the fact that they were dragon marks. She didn't tell anybody. Um, and she separated them so the marks couldn't be active. So, what was she protecting them from? If she'd already separated them, aided them, uh, what, 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 what was the issue there? But, meanwhile... The other interesting thing is that Brax and Maximus, they find out that somebody has been going from cloister to cloister releasing the dragon marks. We're obviously assuming that it's Kristoff. We don't know that, but uh, 
according to someone who tells Elda, they they think it's Kristoff, and I I honestly too do. I only, I feel bad for Elda honestly. I know she's like supposed to be the spoiled rich kid, but can you imagine being stuck with a father who's like power hungry and obsessive and insane? He won't let you do anything. He won't let you go anywhere. And, like, now you have to deal with the reputation of my dad is a psychopath. That that poor child. I wish they'd explore that more. I wish they'd explore more uh, how the Elda's feeling about this. Actually, I wish they'd that she'd be the one to go and explore and find out about this. Because that would be an interesting plot line if Elda decides, you know, I want to stop my dad from doing all of this. Because it... Either because it's wrong, or because I I want this power for myself, or because I'm pissed off that my father doesn't pay attention to me. He, I honestly wanted want more out of her because I think she's an interesting character, but the show really hasn't done anything with her. I hope it does. We're we're there are like five episodes left, so we still got time. But yeah, Brax and. Maximus are going to go look for these cloisters. Uh, But that is it for today. And tomorrow we are on episode 12. Originally I was going to split these episodes by pair. So I was going to say 11 and 12 are 1. 13 and 14 by 1. But since we're doing all of it in one week. I don't feel the need to do that. Um, Eventually I might go back to a different episode every day if I decide that people are getting bored of this same thing every single week. But, uh, we will see that when it comes to, we will, we will see when it comes to that. So I will see y'all tomorrow for episode 12.